Before we actually get to today's video, I do want to mention that if you guys do like the product, make sure to check out Beamer Tech down below. If you purchase their MMI Prime, you guys would get 10% off using my code XMSNOR, and you'll actually get their free DIY essential kit as well. So uh, yeah, check it out. First link down below. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. What's up guys? Welcome back to show. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are back with a i3 video. And I know a lot of you guys don't like the i3 content, but I mean, I love my i3 and I do want to modify it as my daily. So I am in the lookout for new upgrades and new modifications for this little bad baby because um, she's treating me really well. And, I, and I, I just want to make sure that she's the most ideal daily driver out there. So you guys already know for the best daily ever, you have to get the MMI Prime. I've literally installed this exact kit in so many of my cars. I think I've been installed the MMI Prime and probably over five or six cars. I've gotten other Apple CarPlay devices from eBay and other companies and I'm not gonna lie, when I plug it in, it, it basically messes up my computers and it gets really buggy and stuff like that. The box itself might look the same and it looks like it is the exact same thing as the MMI Prime, but the software in this one makes it look a lot more premium and at the same time, the software on this one is not buggish. The other ones that are literally half the price or sometimes even just 25% cheaper than this, honestly have a lot of issues and I really, really, really prefer this one. Again, I've probably probably had five to six MMI Prime. I've installed it in a, in a BMW i8, no issues. It was very nice. I'm about to install it in an i3 right here. I installed it in like an M3. I installed it in a 335, um, an F chassis. I've installed it in so many different cars. Um, and the MMI Prime has, has just been super easy to install. And actually today's video for the i3, it's gonna be even easier just because the unit itself is actually in the trunk. So there's less cable management that you have to deal with in the front, um, which is amazing. Like it's actually gonna make it very easy and I'm very excited because this is definitely gonna be an upgrade for the i3. I I don't even know why a 2017 i3 does not come with Apple CarPlay, uh, but it definitely should. So that's why we're doing this upgrade. And of course, they're going to be doing it with their DIY Essential Kit. This is a super nice kit, guys. I am not going to lie. I got the exact same kit when I actually installed the Alpha One speakers on this beautiful E91 M3. Like, look at this, guys. Like, it's absolutely stunning. When I installed the Alpha One speakers in the E91 M3, um, I got this kit from Beamer Tech as well. And oh my God, that's literally all you need to install the entire speaker system. And this is all I'm going to need to install the MMI Prime. Like this kit is literally your BMW DIY essential and it's very high quality. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's metal. This ain't plastic. Uh, the cutouts and everything are like labeled, which is super nice. And this is one of those kits that you throw in the back of your car and you know that you have every tool you need to get anything sorted on your car. I mean, of course it's not like for mechanics and stuff, but like trim pieces, upgrades, little stuff like that for the interiors. This will literally do it all. It even has a pick tool, which is super nice. So yeah, this is the MMI Prime. I'm not gonna lie. I've gotten so many of these before, but this box does look a little bit different. So so this time it's magnet. I mean, last time we used to just slide it up. So uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, we got, you know, we're greeted with the nice stickers and stuff. The beautiful MMI Prime. I do love the blue. I'm a huge blue guy. I mean, if you're a BMW guy, I'm sure you love blue too. Moving the MMI Prime out of the way because I cannot get it out right now. Down here is all the cables you're pretty much gonna need to plug it in. This is a complete plug and play harness. We don't need to do anything special to get this to work. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna saw it on my BMW i3. This is a 2017, but I'm pretty sure it works on all years the exact same. So yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and install it into my toaster. Now, thankfully my i3 does come with the big screen. I absolutely love this screen, but the only thing this thing pretty much lacks is honestly the Apple CarPlay. Like this is like, this is cool and all, but like, I mean, what are you gonna do with this other than listen to music? Is that actually touch screen? No, it's not touch screen, imagine. <laughs> That'd be kinda cool. So without further ado guys, before actually getting the kit, messing with the kit, let's just go ahead and start taking things apart. We pretty much have to take out this glove box and we do have to take off a lot of the plastic pieces, like this piece right over here, this piece down over here. We're gonna be pretty much exposing all the carbon fiber on this car, which is <laughs> kind of crazy to say. And we're also gonna be removing these rear seats over here because actually, let me see if I can just pull up on this real quick. That right there is your head unit. Kind of crazy that it's actually on your back seat. When I saw somebody install this, I was like, what the heck? So since we're actually back here anyways, you just pretty much popped up the seat, nothing special there. It's kind of crazy to see all the modules just kind of like chilling like a villain right back here. Just absolutely crazy because again, most cars, it's not really in this area. But then again, what am I expecting? The i3 is a quirky car. We're just gonna go ahead and just disconnect this quad lock over here, move it out of the way because we're gonna be putting a adapter in the middle of that and I think that's pretty much all here for the rear I think that's some kind of other module we don't need to touch anything else that's the only thing we have to disconnect I'm gonna go ahead and go get a flathead and a plastic ply tool to get all these plastics out of the way so we have easy access to the glove box So 
So now that we got this and this out of the car, um, at this point, we can actually route the wires up once we actually got this glove box. So let's go ahead, pop this glove box. There's like a few little caps over here and let's go ahead and just remove this thing. And just like that guys, the glove box is officially out. We can go ahead, oh, we actually can't even really close this. We just gotta move this out of the way. So now that we got the glove box out, we have so much space to set this MMI Prime. This is gonna be super easy to install. Um, so the next thing is, is actually getting out this screen. There's actually like one cable um, somewhere over here. Uh, actually, I think we have to unplug it from the back of the screen. So let's go ahead. I believe there's like two caps on the tops over here. It's so like there's this cap and that cap. So you gotta pop them off and there's two more T20s and then the screen just pretty much pops up. So now that the cable is disconnected, let's just go ahead and move the screen off to the side. Do not damage these. I think these go for like six or $700. So you do not want to damage the screen. So you guys can see the connector that connects to the trunk is very, very, very long because it needs to come up to the front to connect to the MMI Prime. So we're actually going to put this off to the side right now. We're not going to touch that. If you guys look over here, we do have an antenna that we're going to go ahead and mount down there as well. We have an LCD out cable that we're going to go ahead and connect in a little bit as well. And then we also have uh, this as well. We're, uh, this is pretty much for uh, reverse cameras and stuff like that. Um, we're not we don't really need that because my i3 actually comes with a reverse camera but that is an option if you guys want to get that from beamer tech as well um so i mean i kind of already have another option which is kind of cool but it does come with the usb port and for any updates and stuff like that i do want to have access to the usb port and honestly like there's really only three cables that plug into this thing other than that too so um i'm gonna go ahead and just install everything so a lot of the i3s have the smaller screen so if you guys the screen is not as big as this one um that's not going to be an issue just go ahead and play with the toggles right up here just match it with this diagram over here if you guys have the bigger screen like me um it looks like it's already kind of preset oh and it's not preset so i do need to pretty much drop it one so number three i'm just gonna go ahead and click that down Onwards just like that and now this should be able to recognize my bigger screen which is gonna be absolutely perfect so now that we got that toggled we're gonna go ahead and route this cable back over here so we're gonna go ahead and take this pink cable and just kind of feed it backwards and try to pull it through through the glove box and once you actually route it through the glove box right over here we're gonna go ahead and grab our MMI Prime again and the pink cable is actually gonna go where it says LCD in so it's actually everything's labeled on the MMI Prime which is really nice over here so again that first one over there it says LCD in that's where the purple is gonna go into and this is our LCD out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just route this now so we can actually put in the screen. So now that we have this cable routed, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this side again to the LCD out. And then this side to the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and just reinstall the screen. So now that the screen is installed, let's just go ahead and connect everything else to the MMI Prime so we can go ahead and push this off to the side. Just to give you guys kind of an idea, I went ahead and just connected everything in here and then I routed all the cables down in that little crack right there. You can see the floor, the light right there. So in terms of cable management, I went ahead and just put in the MMI Prime in that direction uh, just because if I need to flip any switches, it's easy to access. And uh, yeah, got all the wires kind of routed within that silver piece right there. And uh, I think at this point, we just go ahead and plug in the glove box. Just gotta plug in these two Two things and then just reinsert it. So finally got all the plastics back in place right over here. I don't know if you guys can see the USB is barely sticking out. That's pretty much as I want it right over here. I don't want too many things that are aftermarket showing, but that USB is like super clean. I can access it if I need to. And if not, it's just tucked away right over there. The antenna is right over here, perfectly mounted. You can't see any of that stuff from up here, which is perfect. And the glove box, I actually haven't put in the screws just yet, just in case we need to play around with it. But I did get all the panels back in place. So now this wire, I'm going to go ahead and just tuck it underneath the carpet all the way back here and then we're gonna go ahead and just plug it in. I'm gonna go ahead and put in this small piece first. I went ahead and actually remove the two clips and we're gonna actually have to remove the clips for everything else as well, just because it makes things a whole lot easier to install. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide in the clips onto the plastic trim pieces, one over here and one over here, and then just go ahead and press it in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the last plastic trim piece back up here. Bada bing, bada bang, this section is done right there. And same with this trim piece, we're gonna go ahead and just put in all the plastic tabs before actually putting it in there. So now that the plastics are all back in place, uh, basically this quad lock right over here, we disconnected the main one that goes into the unit right here. From the harness, we're gonna go ahead and put the male connector into the unit itself, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug the male into the female of the harness, and then that's it. You just have to pretty much tuck all the wires away, and then we can go ahead and slap in the rear seat. And here's the moment of truth, guys. We got the keys right over here. Let's go ahead and 
push this button. If this screen turns on, that means the MMI Prime is working, which is a huge plus. If it doesn't turn on, that means we did something wrong. But it's pretty self-explanatory. That's why I went ahead and reassembled everything else. I just didn't put it in the glove box just in case we got to play with some switches and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure it should work. So we're going to go ahead and just turn it on. And three, two, one. Bada bing, bada bang. So it's supposed to act like your normal iDrive, but I believe if you hold the menu button, bada bing, bada bang. <laughs> Finally, finally, this is something I've been wanting on my daily so, so, so badly. Let me go ahead and connect my phone so I can show you guys Apple CarPlay. And just like that, guys, we officially installed Apple CarPlay. It feels so, so, so good getting this thing installed in the i3 because like I told you guys, I'm trying to do everything I need to to this car to make it the best daily driver. We got the wall charger installed. We got the Apple CarPlay installed. I'm thinking about doing some interior modifications, maybe even a carbon fiber steering wheel. Like, who knows? Who knows? I mean, I just can't keep things stock for too long. It's just not in my nature. I love modifying things. I think that's the reason why I'm doing good on YouTube is because I constantly want to upgrade and like try new things and stuff like that. So at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and head out and celebrate and get some food because I haven't eaten and I feel like with Apple CarPlay for the first time testing it out first drive, I think it's I think it's a good time for it. So let me go ahead and get cleaned up around here. We'll go ahead and head out, get some food and just test out Apple CarPlay, make sure everything works. And that looks like it's gonna conclude the video. So unfortunately, this is a shorter video. This is more of just a DIY kind of video I want to throw out there for the i3. Again, there's not many i3 videos out there and I kinda wanna just kinda like branch out a little bit. So I'm doing some i3 content here and there. For those of you guys who don't wanna see i3 content, I completely understand. Uh, but for those of you guys uh, who wanna support me regardless, the i3 content's gonna go out you know, here and there throughout the couple months. Primarily, obviously, we're gonna focus on the E91 M3 build and then hopefully the R8. But again, here and there, it's gonna be some i3 content for those of you guys who want to get an i3 for those of you guys who want to see some cool little you know mods and upgrades to the i3 uh stay tuned because there will be some videos you know thrown out there here and there between a few months so uh anyways that is after to conclude this video hopefully the next video is going to be another e91 and 3 video and uh it's going to probably continue to be e91 and 3 videos until we get the thing pretty much mostly together which i'm pretty excited about so without further ado it's going to have to conclude this video i love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see y'all in the next one peace out